Hello guys and welcome to this episode of the show Community Currencies Now Season 2. Uh, today we're diving into a project uh, called Giveth with co-founder Griff Green, which is a free and open platform, uh, like open source platform designed for building communities around causes basically. And right now I think there are 1,673 projects you can explore. Is that true, Griff? Yeah. Awesome. And uh, well, something, basically, I mean, <laughs> what do you think, Griff? Something like that. They get added every day, so. Yeah. And basically, you can donate to these uh, these different projects, and they're kind of, Giveth is kind of building out a whole digital infrastructure for charities. But uh, let's just dive into it with uh, the man himself, Griff Green. You know a lot more about it than me. Uh, so let's just start by hearing about you, uh, your journey towards blockchain and towards Giveth and give us a brief introduction about Giveth as well. Okay, yeah, I mean, man, that might be the whole interview. Uh, I have <laughs> yeah, a fun story. Big question. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I really do have a pretty fun story. You know, I was, um, I basically am an anarchist or I was like a crazy anarchist that I hated the banks and I did not have a bank account for a while. Like I, I would go and put my, val I, I was a chemical engineer and when I was working, I'd actually go and buy physical gold and silver to store my wealth. Uh, go drive to the mint with my paycheck, you know. Uh, and then uh, when I bailed on chemical engineering because I was building power plants and I worked in the biopharmaceutical industry for a little bit, I didn't like any of those things. I'm way too much of a hippie for that stuff. So I, uh, I, I left that industry and just became a crazy hippie traveling around. And I would literally s sell gold and silver to like physical bars to fund my travels. And honestly, that's annoying. Uh, and I was already in like the kind of anarchist space watching YouTube videos and stuff. And so I, I heard about Bitcoin when it was five dollars really early, but I didn't know how to buy it. Well, I knew how to buy it. They were like, wire money to Japan. And as not a person who likes to use banks, I didn't do that. So. Uh, but eventually, a friend of mine, like several years later, uh, uh, I was watching Bitcoin closely uh, and a friend of mine actually figured out how to buy it with Coinbase and his bank account. So I was able to trade uh, physical gold and silver for Bitcoin uh, in 2013, right after the price went to like 250 and then dropped. I bought right after that drop in mid 2013 and got really excited about it. I, you know, wasn't following too closely, like I was following as closely as I was for them, but then it went to when Bitcoin went to a thousand dollars and, you know, I was traveling Southeast Asia at the, that year yeah. and living very cheaply. And when I, I made like 20 grand off of a three thousand dollar investment and I was like, oh, my God, I could live off this for two years. What yeah, is I mean, going that's on? That's a great investment traditionally. Yeah. And and then the more I learned about Bitcoin, the more obsessed I became. I just couldn't get enough. And uh, I wanted to get into the industry. I wanted to dedicate my life to this. So I have um, because what got me really excited is the, the potential to build bottom up economies that um, provide value that governments provide. And really, how do we replace uh, our antiquated like systems of of, uh, of governing each other, governing our, our world uh, with something better? And that's what I've always really been excited about with crypto. Uh -huh. And uh, so I actually uh, went to Ecuador it was my first like crypto adventure. Uh, and try to become the Andreas Antonopoulos of Ecuador. Try to, try to evangelize to people. I would knock on college classroom doors, like the, the computer science classrooms, and say, hey, like, sorry to interrupt, <laughs> all, all in my book, Spanish. Uh, I, I would like to give everyone Bitcoin and tell them how it works, you know? And so I like give everyone in the classroom Bitcoin <laughs> and show them how to wallet, you know, and all this. Um, but then Ecuador made Bitcoin illegal in, in, or was clearly going to make Bitcoin illegal. Yeah. So I stopped that idea and focused on my studies. I was uh, I actually was part of the first class, a uh, first degree ever in digital currencies. Uh, and I got the first degree master's degree, the first degree period in crypto, like uh, a digital a master's degree in digital currencies. Awesome. And 
Yeah, and while I was doing that, I got really uh, into the sharing economy side of things. I wrote a white paper for a bike sharing economy and got introduced to Slocket and just basically uh, dove into this organization called Slocket, which uh, and became their first employee and uh, built the DAO, which was a huge project, raised 14% of all Ether in existence. Uh, as in like 14% of the market cap of Ether went yeah. into this project. And then it was hacked uh, then it, like <laughs> three weeks after launching. Yeah. And uh, I, led the, I led the cleanup effort of the DAO and uh, made a lot of friends and rescued a lot of money uh, for a lot of people. And uh, this is this uh, this is its own story. I mean, there's lots of books about this. That could, if you want to learn about the DAO, you can look at the Cryptopians out of the ether, or I don't know. There's a bunch of books. I can't even name them all. And I, um, I'm a primary character in that story, so it's that's a fun story to dive into. But after the DAO, I launched Giveth with the people with the White Hat group who rescued the DAO, uh, and. Our goal with Giveth was really my goal the whole time with crypto, which is how do we build something better than governments? And uh, how do we do it without feeling threatened of being assassinated or something, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and basically the strategy is, hey, well, you know, if we do this for charity, uh, no one's going to come after us. If, if we're building systems that, that work uh, for nonprofits, like who's gonna like if we can build DAOs that work for nonprofits, like who's who's gonna be mad, right? Yeah. So and that's and that's what Giveth has always really focused on being is uh how do we and and focused on understanding is how can we make economic models in web three that work for nonprofit causes? And you might be surprised to think that, oh, this is the anarchist, the crypto anarchist dream. Like this is this is the strategy to to like build something better than governments. But we forget that when governments fail to provide the public goods that people demand, the like um, by public goods, I mean the the like services, the public services that people demand, people start nonprofits. Nonprofits is the solution to a bad government, actually, or to a government that's not filling the needs of society. And so nonprofits are the natural place to start. Uh, they don't have good funding. They don't have clear like economic strategies that, that are business models. So they really need this tooling more than anybody else. And uh, yeah, and, and so with Giveth, we've spun out so many interesting projects, Broad ID, DAP Node, Common Stack, Token Engineering Commons, General Magic, and like, I don't know, countless others that have kind of IDEN3, Polygon Hermes, and, and uh, really interesting projects that kind of span the space of scalability, identity, um, and all these things. But Giveth, uh, you know, the strategy has always been to scale horizontally, to spin out projects. Yeah. So that each organization yeah. can stay with its focus, not be like Meta or or ABC, like Google was just like eat up everything and put it all under one brand, but actually like kind of decentralize and and focus on on one thing. And give us focus has always been nonprofits. Uh -huh. How do we bring nonprofits into the space and turn them into DAOs? That's awesome. And that's a great story. And it's really awesome what you guys are building and what, what it has kind of amounted to. So just to kind of uh, recap to get some kind of foothold at the basics, at just the first glance, I would think that uh, that giveth is, you know, you have these different projects and you can fund uh, in the beginning, it was ETH. I don't know if it's just ETH anymore, but at least you can fund cryptos uh, to different charity projects that you want, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And yeah. one thing I found interesting is just that you guys have a really big emphasis on community. So one of the natural questions I guess I would have is what kind of differentiates you guys from uh, like what different differentiates you from something like Kickstarter, which is more of a business, because I know you guys have more of a community approach. Uh, so both mm -hmm. in terms of the community side and the kind of governance side but also in terms of blockchain and how that's kind of helping you to elevate in the technicals in a way that the maybe traditional uh, like funding uh, applications or businesses 
aren't able to. So those are kind of two sides that I'd like for you to dive into if you can. Yeah. Awesome. I mean, the biggest differentiator is, of course, our token economy. And like, hey, community currencies now, this is the topic, right? And actually, you know, I should say community currencies now spun out of Giveth as yeah. well. Like, uh, spun stack. I used to host this program, which is kind of yeah, cool. So I thank know, you. The first season, and, right? Yeah. So thank you so much for taking it on, man, and keeping it alive while I, I focus on other things. But, um, I, and it's, it's kind of fun to be on this side of it. But, uh, but yeah, so, so, the biggest differentiator is our token economy, obviously. Like effectively, we Giveth has replaced the traditional 501c3 tax deduction like strategy and, and service that the government used you provides. And we replaced it with something better, something more simple, honestly. Um, we're effectively our own kind of uh, jurisdiction, our own nonprofit jurisdiction in the Web3 space. We don't care if you're a legal entity. We don't care if you're a registered nonprofit. We have our own verification process. Anyone can create a project on Giveth, right? And start raising funds in crypto. Totally permissionless. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to talk to us. Just do it. Um, but we ha offer this program called Givebacks where if you're a verified nonprofit, if you give us a little bit more information, you explain that you've had success in the past, that you can show us that you've, you've done something with the money that you've raised before, and that you are uh, actually providing public goods to society. You're not selling hot dogs on the street, you're helping the homeless, or you're taking care of the environment, or, or providing some kind of public benefit uh, that's non-excludable specifically then uh, then you can become a verified project. And uh, verified projects, when people donate to them, they, we actually give the donor give tokens uh, that are streamed over time. So right now it's up to 75%, and soon it's gonna be up to 80% of your donation can actually be given back to you in the form of give tokens that are streamed to you over time. So uh, right now, uh, if you if if like if you donate to a project today, that's verified, and there's not that many donations in the donation round, then if you donate a hundred dollars, then we will uh, give you seventy five dollars worth of give tokens. A hundred percent of the donation goes to the nonprofit. We don't take a cut anywhere, uh, and we give the donor seventy five dollars of give token, and twenty five percent of that will be given to them liquid. And the other 75% of that $75, sorry for the math and numbers, but <laughs> That's fine. Uh, the other 75% will actually be put in a stream and stream to them, stream to the donor for the next four years. So the crazy thing here is that if the give token price actually goes up, then the donor could make more money than they donated. And uh -huh. only in web three is this kind of stuff mm -hmm. possible. And, and this is what really excites me about Web3, is the ability to build runaway economic machines that fund public goods, that solve problems that governments and nonprofits are used to solving. That's, and that's the goal of Giveth, is to make that easy for any nonprofit to kind of spin up on their own. We're a long way from that. Common Stack is really our applied research uh, arm effectively of Giveth that spun out to really figure out how do we build these economies that work in the real world. But um, there's a lot of proof of concept that's already out there that has shown that there is potential for this kind of uh, this kind of Web3 magic to solve real problems in the world. Uh, can can I go into some of those? Yeah, I mean, of it's course. a little tangent. Please feel free to. Uh, so, you know, back in the day, back in my day uh, in the crypto <laughs> world, uh, everyone was starting blockchains. There were no smart contracts. I mean, there were smart contracts, but no one called them that. They're like multi sigs on Bitcoin and stuff. But um, so if you wanted to create a project, you had to create your own blockchain and get miners and stuff like that. So the first fork of Bitcoin was called Namecoin. This is uh, a, a platform that allows you to register uh, domain names like ENS or like GoDaddy, right? Yeah. Uh, and Namecoin, it was a dot bit domain. So Namecoin still exists today. No one uses it. I think I saw a tweet the other day that said there were like 
1,200 domain names registered under .bit. And, and you know, they're probably like uh, ABC or Google.bit and stuff like that that people are just speculating on. No one is really using this platform. Yet, every 10 minutes, a block is mined, and miners are providing this service as a win-win. They are providing domain registration that's uns 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 even cares. There's no demand for it, but it's uncensorable domain registration with clear, transparent rules that is a public good for society, right? It's public infrastructure that anyone can use. Uh -huh. No one uses it, but yet it still survives even though no one cares. PrimeCoin is another prime example. Uh, it, it, every, every minute, 10, PrimeCoin finds about 10 uh, new prime numbers. No one cares about, I, I shouldn't say no one cares about these <laughs> things. There are, a few, there are a few people who care, yeah. right? But really, very few people are watching. Like PrimeCoin website doesn't, there used to be this website called primes.zone that's not even up anymore. They don't even count how many prime numbers they have anymore. They don't have a website that's that's functioning, you know? But yet every minute, 10 new prime numbers are found. PrimeCoin has found 50 million prime numbers. That's since a lot. Existence. Before that, yeah, before that, we only knew about 4 million to put in the counts. And it's finding new prime numbers every day. Uh, and, and it's because it's an economic machine. Uh, Another another example is CureCoin. CureCoin is uh, is like an old blockchain as well. All of these are like 2013 blockchains, like things that excited me when I got into crypto. CureCoin, uh, have you ever heard of like folding at home or SETI at home, like search for extraterrestrial intelligence at home? No, actually not. These are programs that you can run on your computer as like an altruistic gift to society. Right? And, yeah. and it will... Like in the background, the processor will search data looking for patterns that might be communications from aliens, right? Or, uh, or specifically folding at home, which is what CureCoin uses. Uh, it's folding proteins for researchers in Stanford to do Alzheimer's research and cancer research to like find new tech proteins that could be beneficial for for the health of society, uh -huh. right? And. Uh, and folding at home has been this altruistic thing for a long time. But in 2013, maybe it's 2014, CureCoin came out. And uh, to mine a block in CureCoin, you have to fold proteins with folding at home. So they took something that was purely altruistic and all of a sudden created an economic game behind it where new issued tokens are given to those who are creating value for society. and. The only demand for the token is speculation. But still to this day, even with very little demand for the token, or you know, the other demand is just altruistic integrity. Like, hey, you don't want to use processing power on your computer, but you just want to financially contribute to folding proteins. Buy CureCoin. Just <laughs> yeah, buy you it. You can do that. <laughs> That's awesome. And, and, and you now instead of donating, you can buy CureCoin and just and you could even make money by helping people fold proteins through investment. This is a this is what got me like, whoa, oh my God, what could we do with this? And yeah. how do we take economic models uh, and bring them into the default world and bring them to nonprofits? Because nonprofits can't have a business model. If their if their goal is to like for instance the Girl Scouts sell cookies right, but the Girl Scouts' goal isn't to sell cookies. They sell cookies. They they use child labor to sell cookies, uh, to uh, and like the sweetness of young of young girls so that they can also learn how to enjoy nature and build an appreciation for the great outdoors right and learn skills that are useful, uh, earn badges and these sorts of things. Uh, that's the real goal of Girl Scouts. It's not to sell cookies. So lots of nonprofits, they have these side businesses that help fund the real goal, which is yeah. in some way to create value for society that's non-excludable. And yeah, and this is, uh, this, this is a huge problem. Nonprofits are, in my opinion, straight up being exploited. We're, society is exploiting nonprofit contributors to, because they they're taking we as a society are 
enjoying the value of their services and not rewarding them. And I think that has to change. I think that will change. And Giveth is leading the way. Our goal is to make it so that any nonprofit can come into Web3, start just doing what they're used to be doing, which is uh, asking for donations, right? But now they're asking for donations in crypto. They're starting to learn the crypto techniques and, yeah. and oh, what is this token? What, how does that work? You know? And eventually we have all these, this, this roadmap of where first, uh, you know, when projects succeed on the platform, we can actually help them DAOify. We can help them build a, a reputation DAO so that labor and expertise can have a, a voice in their, in their no, traditionally capital controlled system. And, and make sure that this is done, you know, in, in an authentic way that's what's best for the public, the, the commons, the, the public good that people are trying yeah. to produce. And then, and then eventually, if this is all a success, we can actually help them launch their own token. That would be collateralized by the gift token and then actually become like their own DAO with their own token economy that has an issuance method where they can reward contributors and a, a demand for their token. Unlike Curecoin and Namecoin and Primecoin, the demand can be built into the system before they launch so that uh, there's very clear utility to the token before like just being only speculative. Yeah, that's really awesome. And it, it almost feels like, or maybe it's the fact that uh, like these new kind of economic models that people are coming up with in blockchain for charity, it can almost feel like you can generate extra value uh, without really having to put in. It's like you don't really do a trade for the value. It's almost like you can make some economic models that can allow you to gain some extra value, which is really awesome. Positive sum games. You know, it's it's not really extra value. It's it's more like you're quantifying qualitative value that already existed yeah it just was never quantified before it's it's like solar panels you know you could say solar panels are free energy right it's like oh my god where did this electricity come from <laughs> the sky yeah right it's like no it, it, it came from the sun there are photons beaming down on the earth at any time and the solar panel is just capturing it and this is this is what i i, I see as uh, the, a better analogy. It's not like, oh my God, we just created money out of nothing. No, there was value already there. But, you know, a nonprofit is creating value. Think of your uh, favorite nonprofit. Think of all the value that they're creating. They're not. They're, how do they, what do they? How do they get rewarded for that value? How do they? How do they build a system that can, you know, multiply that value and and be regenerative so that they can build and bring competent people and and like uh you know expertise into the system so that and the, and entrepreneurs can come in and build with them they can't because they have to just beg for money they're literally just begging for money begging for labor begging for alt uh expertise and people are sacrificing to support it this is this is just a broken system. Like it can never scale. It can never really succeed at solving problems. There's too many like disconnects. Whereas in the free market, you know, it's a win-win all the way. Coordination is effortless. I don't have to go like, like, you know, Milton Freeman, I think is, uh, had this like great example of like a pencil. Like if I want to make a pencil, I don't have to go find someone to mine the graphite, find someone to, grow the trees, find someone to uh, create the metal or, or build, grow trees for the rubber, you know, like people do that and then they sell it. And there's this like amazing profit as a showing point. There's this amazing coordination mechanism where everyone's using spreadsheets effectively and they can find customers and, 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 and it, coordination is effortless and entrepreneurs can come in and bring all of these pieces together and create products. In the nonprofit space, it's just not that way. Everything's pushing a boulder uphill because coordination isn't effortless. There isn't this profit as a shelling point. There isn't a, a clear win-win when everyone's participating. It's pulling teeth to get people to come to a banquet and then give you a bunch of money out of mostly guilt. I mean, don't get me wrong. Nonprofit space is beautiful. And it's the altruist, like 
you know, contributing to nonprofits is not like a com- always a completely selfless act. You get a lot out of it. It's very enriching. But from the financial sector, from the financial perspective and dimension, it's just a no. It's a non-starter, and that needs to change. Yeah. Because if if we get that piece in, and we actually make working in nonprofits an entrepreneurial opportunity. People don't want to sell fucking iPhones or build bombs or build factories. They want to take care of society. They want to support the homeless. They want to clean up the environment. We're stewards of the world. If there was an economically viable way to do that, we could actually create so much abundance for society because the energy is there the, the like the emotional and, and like like uh, like internal fulfillment the intrinsic motivation is so high that people are willing to work for free and just burn like in the US people, there there's over 500 million dollars donated every year it's crazy 500 billion dollars burned just given away not even invested like if we could make this economically viable using web3 technology it would be it would be a game changer it'd be a game changer for global coordination across the you know like across the board yeah if people could just entrepreneurial ideas in this space oh my god that makes sense and uh that was a great way to put it by the way and i think that's a pretty good segue into something else that i wanted to talk about getting a little closer to giveth because i think a lot of people can relate to in traditional charities kind of uh donating and then either feeling like your money's just gone and not really knowing where it goes or maybe being scared that your money is just the part of all the money that went to paying for some administration. So I was, I, I'm kind of wondering what's Giveth doing to kind of strengthen the bond between, I guess you could say, giver and receiver uh, <laughs> in, a, in a charity. And like, how's that relationship kind of getting developed from your guys' perspective? You know... I'll be honest, we've focused on that for years and uh, we built this whole system called Giveth Trace. Yeah. And that was like the original Giveth Dapp, uh, where when you donate, you know, if you're invited to join the community, we make all the systems for nonprofits to like bring, create like a Telegram room or a Facebook chat or whatever. So whenever someone donates, you get an email, join this project, you know, support this project, get involved. Um, and we actually found out that even though people say that they want traceable donations, so the other cool thing was like when the money goes to the nonprofit, the nonprofit has to say what they're going to spend the money on. And it was all cool Web3 systems. And this is like early days. This is one of the first applications that ever used a side chain in 2018. We actually used, because there were no other block explorers, uh, we actually used Rinkaby, a test net, uh, to bridge uh, value tokens over to a test net to keep gas cheap and then move it over to mainnet on payouts and donations like uh, it was an incredible technical feat honestly it's really impressive uh, but no one cared you know we, we think that we want this no I, I, I like when I from our research uh, what people really want is to feel good donating and what projects really want is the money I, I mean it sounds it sounds gross in some ways, but like the bandwidth of a project of a nonprofit project to manage a community, the bandwidth of a nonprofit project to have forced accounting, it just creates a lot of extra friction. And there's yeah. enough friction in yeah. just using crypto. So we tried to just streamline that line that as much as possible. Couple clicks, you're donated. You donate any token on Ethereum. If you want to use a side chain, right now we support Gnosis Chain and we're looking to support other chains as well. Uh, we're building that in. And we're just trying to make donation as effortless as possible and collecting funds as effortless as possible and allowing the, the nonprofits to engage with how they want to engage. They see who's donating. They have access to their profiles. They can send them emails. We've never gotten a request from a nonprofit that they want more engagement with their donors. That's awesome. You know, and, and so our, our goal is to really just listen to our users. You know, we tried for years to build what we thought people wanted. Done with that. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna focus on the token economy and make sure that giving can be rewarded. And uh, and that nonprofits can be rewarded for their work, uh, and this 
is our focus is on the financial dimension, or at least my focus. I, of course, we have a, a, t a whole team dedicated to making sure that the community is being built and, and, and these things. But my focus personally is on the financial dimension and how we can change this. And then we'll just listen to user feedback and build features in that people demand. That's really awesome. Like, I really like how you're doing it. Uh, also, I wanted to kind of get a perspective on how Giveth is kind of, a, I guess you could say, a branch on a bigger tree. Because my, I feel like you guys are definitely part of a bigger ecosystem. And you talk to a lot of other projects. Uh, I'm sure you know them. Uh, that are kind yeah. of trying to do the same thing, but maybe in a different way. So I'm, I'm wondering, how are you guys collaborating? And maybe you can give us a sense of how this bigger field within blockchain is evolving and where you guys kind of sit on that tree. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's so cool in the blockchain space because uh, especially in the public goods blockchain space, because there's really no competition. There's not everyone's a collaborator. Yeah. Network effects are so critical and our goals, anyone who's in this space that we're working in is like the goal is to create abundance for society. Yeah. The goal is to create a better world. Who's competing to create a better world? You know, like you're not going to be like, that guy's creating a better world, better than we are. Damn it. Yeah, no, that's you're really like, awesome. Help. It's kind of an impression that's I've had in crypto in general that people are all kind of working towards a common goal, like at, least, at least most people. Uh, and some they have some uh, similar ideology, ideological backgrounds. And that kind of just helps all people support each other and contribute. And that's like, that's just great. It really makes, makes for a good environment. Everyone here is in pine is a pioneer. Like we're still so early in this space. You know, it, it's it's a, a drop in the bucket, a drop in the in the like giant lake of of like the traditional financial markets, the traditional nonprofit space. It's tiny. So, um, you know, other other groups were partnered with the Giving Block. All the Giving Block projects are on our platform. We're working closely with Gitcoin so that we can build a better Grants 2.0 platform. At least we're trying to. Uh, actually, right after this, I have a call with the Gitcoin um, product manager, Kevin Olson. So I'm really excited to chat with him about how we can better build build this stuff together. And those two are those projects are really the leaders in the space. And we're very well connected with them. I'm a steward in Gitcoin and and uh, very, very uh, much part of that community. And also uh, Giveth, you know, since we've been around since 2016, we launched, we helped launch many projects. Uh, Aragon used our code and we helped them do their ICO and launch their token. Status is another big group that we helped launch their token and help them build their DAO early on. Uh, we also, um, ourselves give us spun out, um, as I said before, um, DAP node, which is a, a, a pro, like a community that is focused on making it easy to run your own node at home and then uh -huh. share it with your friends and family. So we can have like a really good decentralized backbone of heart of hardware instead of all the stuff happening on AWS. Um, we also are really focused on identity. Because if we're going to solve the public goods problem, we need to have like some kind of dimension of like how many people care, you know, not how many bots care, how many addresses that anyone can generate care, but how many people like, you know, proof of uniqueness is really important. So we have Bright ID that spun out of Giveth. Uh, it's really simple, like proof of uniqueness protocol. There's also Polygon ID, which is was previously IDEN3, which is like a nice uh, attestation protocol where any program, any anybody can make a, a attestation on any other person or any other key. So it's like a, what does what does that mean? A attestation is like a claim or a, a statement. Like I could say, like Anton's has the best smile I've ever seen. You know, yeah. <laughs> uh, and and then that would that would be clear that this data, you know, could be listed and said like, oh, well, Griff, this key who has this reputation and this identity and da da da, says made this statement to Anton. Okay. You know, who has this key and this reputation. Yeah. And now you know, with this baseline understanding, we can build a lot of interesting things. Because uh, um, like, you know, if we want to replace nation states, which really is, is my goal, uh, we have to look at what they're providing, the values they're providing. You know, 
I, identification. Like, if you're not part of a nation state, do you even have an identity? You know, all identity is issued by nation states. This is a public good that they support. So we need to find a way to solve that problem uh, from the bottom up without the need of central authority. And yeah. so the cool thing with this system is that anybody can be give a claim and anyone can judge that claim for its authenticity or or say, you know, what, Griff is the best judge of smiles. So, like, you know, I think he's a great judge of smiles. So I'm going to really listen to his his decisions around who's smiling the best. Uh, but maybe someone else is like, actually, I don't trust Griff at all. I, I, I trust the U.S. government to tell us about the smiles. You know, OK, cool. You know, and there, there'd be a group from the U.S. government that can also give certifications. And it doesn't matter that, you know, um, if you want to trust central authority, it's not that you can't. It's not that you shouldn't. You can. And but we should have a protocol where they can't abuse that power and that they can always be challenged and competed with. And and like just in general, this is like the baseline vision that I have for building a better world is that we need to be competing to provide public services for society. We need organizations to be responding to the demand of the people uh, in an effortless way and competing to satisfy that demand. <sighs> no one voted for an iPhone. Like I, I do, I believe in voting, but I don't necessarily think it's the end all be all way that we should focus on providing public goods uh, voting once every four years is not cutting it we need to build better systems that require a lot less voting and can actually just respond to you know demand in in a way that's easy to coordinate around so really you can uh, see uh this whole project as kind of a case study to see how you can change all sorts of centralization and like on a whole state level. Yeah. I, and the way things I mean, are governed and the way the infrastructure works. Yeah. It's not about revolution. It's about evolution, right? It's not about tearing down the structures that exist. The structures that exist are serving purposes and we can't tear them down. We need them. But, you know, like it's, I don't remember, you know, a violent overthrow of corded telephones, you know, <laughs> just, something better emerged you know and this is how it's going to be for solar power this is how it's going to be for uh just everything the the technology yeah. needs to satisfy the demand better than the current incumbent and oftentimes it needs to be 10 times better because there's costs of changing so we're a long way from that in web3 and solving public goods issues from the governments that governments are solving I don't think we're very far from being able to solve problems for nonprofits that are 10x better. Biggest nonprofit problem, they need funding. Uh, you know, other projects that spun out of Giveth, Common Stack, uh, which is kind of our applied research arm, that's what they're really tackling. How do we create an uh, organization that has a nonprofit bend, trying to provide value in the nonprofit space? and can have its own token economy. And I think Tam was in a previous call with you and like, uh, or maybe they'll be after me. I don't know how you're gonna, <laughs> you know, you know, put these out, but yeah. uh, she, she goes deep into common stack. So I, I don't necessarily need to go too deep into it. But uh, the first project we launched was the token engineering commons. And its goal is to advance token engineering, to provide token engineering as a public good, support projects like, the Token Engineering Academy, uh, NumPy, and like other pr um, like protocols uh, that token engineers need to do their job and listen to the token engineers and find out what needs they have and then try to satisfy those needs as a public good. Uh, this this economy has been a huge success. Like uh, it, given the bear market, its price is still higher than it was launched at, which is crazy in this market. You know, everything else is lost like 90, 75 to 90 percent. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and this is a public goods focused economy. So uh, and this is what's really exciting. Also, of course, is we need token engineering. We need to understand how to engineer these systems in a way that is safe and ethical and, you know, 
takes in the signals of the community to bring its direction forward. Uh, this is all like really what we're focused on. And, and then another project that spun out of Giveth, you know, just because listening to the demands and the needs is General Magic. General Magic is actually a service style. It's the only for-profit organization that I'm really affiliated with, actually, uh, like has traditional business models. But every organization in crypto is for-profit, but often it's not profit like there's revenue, costs, and then the revenue is goal is to be larger than the costs, and then there's like some shareholders that take a profit. Instead, it's economic models. There's a token that's issued, and that token's issuance funds people to do work. And then there's a demand for that token. And uh, as long as the demand outpaces the issuance, then there's, you could say profit, but really it's just, it's economically viable. And uh, General Magic is actually has a business model, but it's a supportive business model where it, it provides value to impact DAOs and, and people that are launching community currency projects and stuff like that uh, to, you know, at a normal rate. It's like not everyone can afford a designer full time, but you can go talk to General Magic and they'll do some design services or they'll yeah. do like, be a front end dev or a back end dev. And like all of my projects that I'm working on kind of <laughs> needed that. Yeah. You know, they needed some like float of, of expertise and development services. So it just kind of emerged as its own group. And, you know, to to make things work in a coordinated way, they, they charge fees and then provide services to give it token engineering commons, common uh -huh. stack, ENS, uh, all these groups. So for yeah. So, yeah. yeah, great, because I was just about to interrupt you, <laughs> because we have uh, five minutes left. And I want to end on uh on the some more giveth related topics uh so we've talked about right. uh we talked about the basics of giveth and you mentioned give trace which is a component of it uh i'm wondering let's talk about both what's in the limelight for or like what's next for giveth but also like one thing i found really interesting about it uh was you talking about i saw an interview is from some years ago so i don't know how it's developed since but you talked about the delegates and how people uh, people kind of helping uh, to support a project can ultimately become part of it. We already talked about how they can communicate with each other, but I found it really interesting. So maybe you want to touch on that and then tell us a little bit about what's next for Giveth, uh, what to do if you want to be part of it and help it grow. I'm, I'm a big fan of creating communities around causes. And I think if we can create uh, you know, a economically viable option for people to quit their jobs in the default world and actually start contributing to a nonprofit uh, community in a way that they're excited about, uh, that will be incredible, you know? And so I think, uh, I don't know what I was talking about with delegates, honestly, at the <laughs> time I am a delegate and, and we do integrate delegation into the system because in the end, no one has time for this stuff, right? Yeah. Like. If you're providing, if, if you're a donor, you know, sometimes you just want to donate the money and then focus on being the CEO of your organization. You know, you don't necessarily want to be a contributor, but maybe there's someone who you trust there yeah. that can be accountable and can, can steward your side of the capital. And I think uh, delegation is really critical. We, we, um, we implemented in Give It Trace a liquid, kind of a, we forked a liquid democracy setup so that you can have liquid delegation. So when you, uh, you can just donate money to a cause and then it gets allocated in various ways. Since we built that though, uh, quadratic funding has been really successful through Gitcoin. And so quadratic is- Quadratic funding? Can you explain quadratic that? Fund. Quadratic funding is a, is a cool way of, uh, distributing money for a cause. So like, let's say that you want to support open source development in the yeah. Web3 space in general. You can just send money to the donation pool, the donation matching pool. And and actually, on what's cool is this is public goods Legos. So you can actually go on Giveth and donate money to Gitcoin's quadratic matching pool, mm -hmm. right? And then you get Give tokens back 
and then Gitcoin actually uses your funds to incentivize more donations. So they say, here's this funding pool. Uh, you know, there's a $1 million pool of funds and the projects that get the most donations uh, from the most people will get a share of those funds. And to determine how much of this million dollars each project gets, what matters is how many individual, unique individual people donate and how much money is raised. So it's quadratic in that, um, you know, it, it depends, like, I mean, the real math is that they square root each donation, the value of each donation and add yeah. them together and then square it. And this allows, this gives, uh, if you donate $1, you know, that has a huge impact on the actual end result. And if you donate, uh, if you donate a hundred dollars, that also like, uh, there's, you know, there's lots of examples here, but for an example, you could say if someone donates uh, $1 to this project, then that project will earn 27 extra dollars matching that $1. Oh, okay. But if you, that person donated a hundred dollars, then would get $250 from the matching pool going to that project. So you can kind of see there's like this, it's an interesting donation game Yeah. where the more people who donate, you know, the more money comes from the matching pool. And the, the like, if you donate $1, you get 27x matching. If you donate $100, you only get 2.5% times matching, but that's an extra $250 to the donation pool. Yeah. So it's kind of a cool way to mitigate plutocracy, but still incentivize people to donate more. Yeah. If you have more money, you should still donate more to your favorite project because they'll get more money from that donation. Yeah, it'll still if you don't have The multiplier will still be enough so that it's an, the bonus is bigger the more you will donate, right? Yeah, and yeah. I, I think this is the right way to mitigate plutocracy because money does matter. Capital injections have value, but like the other thing that matters is individual perspective, you know. And every individual who weighs in on something and says this is worth donating to, that also has value. So uh, this is how I would distribute uh, cost pools on Giveth, and or this is why I'm going to have a call with Gitcoin right now. Yeah, uh, I was just about, about to say because I know you have a hard stuff about in a minute. Uh, so is yeah. there anything else you want to share? Uh, I'll make sure to put descriptions, uh, links, all sorts of jazz in the description for people watching the video. Uh, but if there's anything yeah. else you want to share, I guess now's the time, right? I gave a great talk at DevCon a couple of weeks ago that kind of gave an overview of, of what I'm talking about today about the cool ways in Web3 that we can fund public goods. You know, I know this is not the traditional community currency approach where community currency is funding, uh, creating an economy for a local community. Uh, but this is this is a different use case, right? This is saying like, let's effectively create a stock for a nonprofit. Let's create an economy that where labor, capital and expertise can all be rewarded. And and then let's see if we can build, get some of that same magic of the invisible hand in the free market to actually start coordinating in the nonprofit space. And if any of that is interesting to you, check out my talk uh, at DevCon. I go over a bunch of projects in the space, public nouns, you know, Moloch DAOs, Gitcoin, CLR Fund, uh, Optimism, BitDAO. Uh, there's so many interesting projects playing donation games, and there's so many interesting projects doing economic games, rainbow rolls, public nouns, uh, Panvala, uh, just normal blockchains. And of course, Giveth is playing on both sides. Uh, there's, uh, there's so much opportunity in the space. And honestly, it's probably one of the biggest opportunities the world has ever seen. Can you imagine if governments and nonprofits were replaced by economically viable organizations and how big of an industry could emerge out of that? This is not only making the world a better place, but it's also just a huge financial opportunity for the for the early adopters. So yeah. uh, I can't advise enough to get into this. And if you're interested, feel free to reach out to me, uh, you know, tweet at me, uh, the Griff T uh, on Twitter and or or find me like on Telegram or in any of these discords. Just reach out to me and I'll, I, I'm happy to help you get involved. 
Yeah, that's awesome. And getting involved and collaborating is really what it's all about. So I think that's a good way to end it. Awesome. Thank you, Griff. Thank you for your time. Uh, have a good day and good luck with the upcoming uh, talk you're having about now. <laughs> hey. Thank you, Anton, and thank you for taking over Community Currencies now. This is so cool. Thank you so you back, much. Bro. I'm so glad that we're back out. That we're back live. It's awesome. That's great. Bye, guys. Have a good one. See you.